Yeah, my name is Mike Thiel, for those that I haven't met you yet, and uh, I manage the, the high-end uh, HP uh, Z800 series workstation as well as the Z1 that I've talked to a lot of you about as well. So, um, can, can everybody hear me okay? I, I don't know that this was working anyway. <laughs> uh, I need Z microphones and that would fix it. <laughs> so, you know, this is our flagship uh, workstation. It's really intended for those users that are uh, really the power of the power users. Those uh, that are doing the ultimate workload, very heavy workload, very computational intensive. It's also good for you, uh, those of you who want your friends to think you're a power user. Uh, we love you just as much as well. Um, but. You know, I'll, I'll go through this. Uh, I won't cover everything Travis did. A lot of this is duplicate. Uh, you'll notice the industrial design, uh, the updated uh, elegance of the industrial design really matches the rest of the family. So it brings everything uh, right in line. Um, as far as down the front panel, uh, same, same I.O., same slimline uh, uh, optical drive that that Travis talked about on the uh, Z4 and Z6. Uh, still have two five and a quarter inch external bays. Those can be either used for internal devices or external devices, media card readers. Um, you can even put up to eight storage devices <coughs> out there if, if you wish. Um, again, same I.O., same charging port. Uh, one thing to call on the, uh, on the audio, uh, we have uh, both a headset output here as well as a, a microphone. And what we do with that port is we, we retask it. We do what's called retasking. And what that does is it puts the smarts inside the box to allow it to sense what type of device you're plugging in there. So if you're plugging in a microphone, it will adapt and work and function as a microphone. You can also plug your headset in there. Uh, line in, line out. So basically from your front panel, audio-wise, you can do everything you need to do. And we also have ports on the back as well. So just as with our previous uh, Z8 workstations, we have uh, handles on the front and rear. Um, we've also, with this generation, changed the, the top of it to be more of a recessed tray. Uh, that will aid in uh, when someone is charging their phone, their tablet, hard drive uh, connection into the charging port. It, it makes it real easy and nice to set that up there. Um, all of our workstations are rack mountable. This is a 5U uh, rack mount width. And um, up here on the top, this top panel is easily removable, uh, exposing the uh, tapped holes for our uh, our rail kits that we uh, provide as well. And there's matching set on the bottom of that as well. Okay. So just a quick tour around the, uh, the back of the system. Again, uh, power button, as Travis mentioned. Uh, you might see this serial port, this legacy serial port. Believe it or not, we still have a lot of customers who rely on serial port. And the and the real strategy behind the definition of this high-end platform is to put as much down on the motherboard or system board as standard to free up all those I.O. slots that I'll show you in a minute. That allows, again, the most expandability possible. Uh, basically, same other than that, uh, same rear I.O. that, that uh, Travis talked about. And on this system, we do have two uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. These RJ45 ports provide that. Uh, continuing on down, we'll have, there's eight bulkhead slots here. Uh, th there'll be seven electrical PCI slots, and then the top one is a mechanical only uh, slot for uh, those cards that don't need the electrical connection or power. Um, down here, we have a, a, a knockout, if you will, and that's for a uh, uh, SAS four port connector. Uh, we have eight SAS ports down on the motherboard. This allows our users to port four of those out. The remaining four can be ported out through one of these bulkhead connectors or maybe possibly even this top one that doesn't have a PCI associated with it. 
So that allows someone to load up the inside of the system while yet still having very, very large arrays external to the system. Uh, again, all that capability is, uh, is built in. So now we'll take uh, the side panel is lockable as it was on the Z640 as well. That allows users to really secure really their most important asset, which is their, their data on their, their hard drives uh, behind a lockable panel. So that's easily removed, uh, very much like uh, the Z800 and the Z820. Uh, so uh, first thing you notice, uh, somewhat similar to the Z640, lots of green touch points. All this is toolless. Uh, these are toolless indicators. We place a lot of emphasis on achieving low acoustics. Why? Because it improves the user's productivity in the end. And with this system, we're actually needing to cool or remove more power than we ever have before. Graphics cards are consuming more power. The processors are uh, consuming more power. Uh, we're loading this up with more hard drives, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, so the challenge continues as far as acoustics. And really, the only way to achieve those low acoustics is to design that in as a foundational element from the very beginning. Uh, it's, it can't be an afterthought. And as you look at this, um, this system is divided up into three different cooling zones. Each one of those has separate uh, sensors on the system board to control, individually control fans so that those fans only spin as fast as they need to. So you've got your power supply up here. It has dedicated airflow through it. Uh, this area, as I'll open up in a moment, is our uh, CPUs and our memory. And then down here is our storage and our uh, I.O. infrastructure down here. So each one of those is a separate cooling area. So uh, first off, you know, uh, we can uh, remove the power supply. Uh, the power supply will have a choice of either an 850 watt or an 1125 watt. Also what we've done here is we've qualified this system to when it's, when it's connected to a voltage source of greater than 180 volts or more, uh, it'll, it'll be able to output 1,450 watts. So that's really uh, uh, a feature that we've provided for those uh, folks that want to put in two K6000 cards and a Tesla card and load up the memory and processors. Uh, so that, that really allows us to uh, provide more power to how are you? Okay, uh, next I'll open up and, and, and these things, these, uh, these covers that you see here aren't just for show. They do create a very clean look, but they also provide uh, functionality as well. For instance, this, uh, this panel that I just removed uh, helps direct airflow. And it also uh, holds down, acts as a hold down for the I.O. cards that are inside. What we've done here on the Z840 is increase the performance of our uh, PCI Express. We've eliminated the legacy PCI slot and added an additional PCI Express. Uh, so we've got three, when you have two CPUs in the system, you'll have three P Gen 3 PCI Express. By 16s, you'll have two by 8s, you'll have a by 4. These are all Gen 3s, and then uh, a by 1 uh, Gen 2. One of the things we've done is, as you're familiar with the architecture over the last uh, couple generations, is that the PCI Express Gen 3 lanes come out of the CPUs. So when you have a single CPU system, some of those slots aren't active. And so what we did on this generation is we wanted to maximize the number of slots that we have active in a single CPU system while providing the maximum performance in our I.O. area when you have two CPUs. So what we've done is in uh, the fifth <coughs> slot down here, it's when there's a single CPU in the system, it acts as a, a second generation by four slot. So that allows you know, an extra slot that normally wouldn't been, have been there to be used for those single CPU users. 
When a second CPU is connected, it automatically switches to a third generation by a um, all that without any interaction from the user. So there we're creating performance and flexibility, uh, the best of both worlds there. So really when you only have one CPU in here, just two of the seven slots are inactive, um, which is a step up from what we've uh, done before. So uh, now I'll remove uh, this top uh, piece here. Just as you can see, houses uh, six individual fans, and each one of these fans is controlled by sensors on the motherboard, on the system board. So four of these fans cool the memory, and you can see the memory on either side of the processors there, and then you have two fans, one for each processor. And you notice when I uh, pulled this out that there weren't any cables or no tools required. All the fan control and all the uh, uh, voltage that's needed is provided by this connector, which uh, this tool is. So uh, what's exposed here are the, uh, the two Haswell processors. will support the same processors as Travis talked about on the Z640, but we'll add a higher power processor, a 160 watt processor that's not supported in our mid-range platform. Uh, just as on our previous uh, Z820, uh, we have 16 memory slots. That's, uh, we're providing DDR4 just as the other platforms are. So that gives us higher performance, uh, clocks it up to 2133, that's a 14% gain over where we were today. And um, of course, the more cores. And the more cores you put into a system, the more memory you need to feed it. The memory feeds the cores. So uh, as you increase that computational power from the processors, you really need that memory performance to go up, and you also need memory capacity to go up. On this system, uh, it's enabled to support two terabytes of memory when 128 gigabyte uh, DIMMs are available. Um, Did Jack hear you right? Two terabytes. Two terabytes. Right? Two terabytes. <laughs> two terabytes. So if you look at our hard drive selection that we'll have, we'll offer like 20, 20 different hard drives of different capacities and technology from SSD to SAS 15K. Only two of those hard 20 hard drives exceed two terabytes. We have a three terabyte and a four terabyte. So that just kind of puts it in perspective. But we do have customers that really need and use that amount of memory, particularly in the oil and gas exploration area. They will use as much memory as we provide uh, because they're under very t tight time constraints. And the more of the data field, more of the oil field they can visualize at a time, the more time they save off of their, uh, off of their final analysis. And so that's why we continually drive that memory footprint higher and higher um, on this system. Uh, over here, we have our storage area. And uh, just as it has been before, it's completely toolless uh, through these trays. Uh, blind make connect in the back. And what we're seeing in the industry is a transition from three and a half inch drives to two and a half inch drives. And right now we support uh, four, in these carriers here, we can either support four two and a half inch drives or four uh, three and a half inch drives. But what we're hearing uh, from customers is they want more storage capability. They want very large data arrays to, for their 4K video and other, other things that they're working on. And Previously, what we've done is we've provided uh, carriers that fit in the external of the system. You can put eight hard drives out there today. Uh, the disadvantage of that and the feedback we've received is that's not secure. Those, those hard drives contain very, very valuable data, you know, basically priceless information that can't be replaced. So what we did is we, um, those of you who have reviewed or looked at the Z1 uh, workstation, our all-in-one, have noticed that there's the hard drive bay that can either house one three and a half inch drive or two two and a half inch drives without any additional hardware. It just works. Uh, a really significant innovation in, in uh, 
ease of use for our uh, customers and, and service technicians. So what we've done is we've carried forward and enhanced that innovation in, in our Z8 fork. And uh, so what our uh, very good and creative mechanical engineers have done is uh, created a drive bay. And it's a toolless drive bay that basically converts two three and a half inch bays into four, or two three and a half inch bays into four two and, two and a half inch bays. I think I said that. You got right. it. Um, and they are toolless, and this, this has uh, four two and a half inch drives in it. And uh, look, Mom, no tools. So it just fits right in there, and uh, the second one goes in here as well. And then once in there, these can just be removed tool toollessly as well. So we basically converted four bays into eight uh, without any tools. Um, and the real advantage is that uh, uh, you know one of our high-end users can take um, their OS drive and their application drive, raid those together, and they can live up here in one of our five and a quarter inch bays. And then they can use this area down here for their data. They could use multiple RAID arrays. And also they can, they can have multiple of these uh, carriers and uh, have different projects on each one of them. Swap one in and the other um, out. Yeah. You've got Danny drilling over here. <laughs> there, let me turn it around so you can see it. Better. He's going to need a cigarette later. <laughs> So that, that pretty much covers it. You know, this is, you know, and it continues to be our ultimate in performance and expandability. Uh, again, those, those customers in the, the computer-aided engineering, those doing finite element analysis or computational fluid dynamics, very floating point intensive that need a lot of memory, we can provide that. Lots of computational horsepower with the full range of Haswell processors. Uh, very high performance I.O., uh, mostly all PCI Express Gen 3 except for one slot, basically. And then as far as storage, uh, really set the bar higher as far as the number of drives that we can support. And again, we still have the best of both worlds, being able to support three and a half and two and a half, and very efficiently uh, the, three and a, the two and a half inch drives. So um, there you go. You didn't uh, you didn't miss out, and that's what you came to, came to see, right? <laughs> Thanks. <coughs> Mike hey, Alex has a quick question. Hey, Alex. Question on the on the twenty one thirty three. Is that yes is that for DDR four? Is that is that some other board constraint or a dim constraint? It's uh, it's basically the memory controller constraint uh, from the process. So Haswell is limited to that speed. Yes. You, can't, you can't scale the higher That's right. dim, higher dim speed. With this down. generation. And, uh, and it's also a dim constraint. The dims match that, but the real but the dims, source of the constraint well, is the process. You'd imagine the dims would progress, though, I guess yeah. is my question. And when the higher end processors, if, if they come in and they support higher frequency, this is pre-enabled for that. Got it. Yeah, if I notice that while well, you keep some of the legacy things, uh, as a user, I get a lot of people bring me legacy uh, external storage that is FireWire ports. Yeah. Uh, I don't see any FireWire ports. Are there going to be an option for uh, like a, a PCIe FireWire card that we exactly. can shield? Yeah, we, we really uh, hated to get rid of that, but it was it, it kind of it was time to do that. So accept our apologies. <laughs> <laughs> At least we can uh, get it if we need it. Yeah, we offer that as an option.